In this video, I'm going to show you how to write bass parts. Hi, my name is Elliot Deutsch. I'm a composer and arranger from Los Angeles, California, and I have my ensemble Pandemonium Big Band, which is a full-size jazz orchestra. My background is as a jazz trumpeter. That's what I went to college for, and I have <laughs> infinite hours reading parts for trumpet. So if you're like me and you played trumpet or saxophone or trombone or one of the brass wind instruments, the rhythm section parts can be a little bit confounding. I've already done videos on how to write drum parts and how to write piano parts. And here's the third <laughs> one of those videos. This time I'm talking about bass parts. Eventually I'll release a video on guitar parts as well. So just like piano parts, your bass parts mostly going to be chords and slashes. So uh, the style indicator that you put at the beginning of, of the part or at the beginning of each section is going to profoundly impact how the bassist interprets what you wrote. Let me give you an example. Here's a chart that I arranged for the great Nick Mancini, <laughs> uh, vibraphonist, uh, of his, his uh, song Ginger Lily. And in this song, it goes between swing and a straight eights Latin feel. And take a look at how it's notated on the part. Notice that I didn't write very many pitches in that part. Uh, every once in a while, there there might have been like a uh, anticipation noted just so that the bassist would catch it with the rest of the band. But for the most part, I was leaving it up to the bassist to actually come up with the specific notes in their walking bass line. You can assume, by the way, that a bassist is going to play the root on the downbeat of each new chord. During musical passages where they're not specifically just grooving on particular chords, then what's best to do is literally notate the part that you want them to play. Check out how I notated the intro to the song The Cassowary. Uh, the bass starts off playing a written melody, and then when we actually get into the melody section, I gave them both notes and chord changes. I want the bassist to generally stick to those notes, but allow them the freedom to play a little bit more freely. Take a listen and take a look at how this is notated. Also, to sort of drive the point home, when we get into the solo section, I don't have any written melody at all. Just uh, an indication, uh, sim for similar, but freely. Then I give them chords and slashes, just as I probably gave the piano at the same section. Writing bass parts, like all rhythm section parts, is kind of a delicate dance where we want to give the musicians enough information that they can accompany the band in the fashion that we have in mind, but we don't want to put so much information on the page that it's confounding to the musicians that are playing the part. I have not played with a professional bassist in Los Angeles who cannot, off the top of their head, come up with a better bass line than I can write if I spend lots of time trying to come up with the perfect bass line. It's just, that's the focus of their study. It's what they're passionate about and what they do really, really well is coming up with bass lines. So, why would I confound them by writing out a walking baseline on a swing chart, for instance? So 
giving them that freedom to play what they're really great at is kind of the best choice you can make most of the time. Similarly though, uh, you need to have enough information that you can get the effect that you want. So, um, for instance, I have a spot in my arrangement of the Christmas song. They're play it's a, it's goes between 3-4 four, and 4-4, four, four, and most of the time the bass is walking. So when they're walking, meaning a quarter, they're playing quarter notes, <laughs> uh, while they're walking, I don't give them any indication. But then, uh, at a few spots, it goes to um, jazz waltz in one, which is, you know, a dotted half note on each measure. And for that, because it goes into that feel and then leaves it so quickly, I actually notated exactly the, the notes for them to play rather than word indications. In fact, in an earlier version of the chart, I had notated in words what I wanted, and the basis that I had reading in my band 10, 11 years ago when I wrote the chart originally would never sight read that properly. It just, it made more sense with a little bit more experience. I figured out that what you need to do is write actual notes that you want when you have something specific in mind and when you don't allow the basses to do what they do. So check out how I navigated that passage when we redid it uh, last December. There's, there's no way I covered everything you need to know in order to write great bass parts for your jazz band charts. I didn't even talk about composing for the bass. And the bass note is, one, is probably the most important note in the chord, and it's the note that you leave out in your voicing most of the time. So there's infinite comp, uh, compositional things we could talk about, but this was really focused on how to format the parts and get your bassist playing what you really want them to do. So with that in mind, uh, shoot me your questions in the comments. Don't forget to hit subscribe. I didn't ask at the beginning. It's a new thing I'm trying. <laughs> uh, definitely support me on Patreon. I really appreciate the support and it helps me keep this going. And until next time, goodbye.